So the next thing is to do cortex. We've done cubics and we've done quadratics. We're now going to do cortex. And that pattern that we've talked about earlier, it just continues. We're not going to do the proof of them with cortex because they become quite long. You saw how long it was when we did it with cubics. So we're just going to notice that the patterns are the same thing, that the sum of the roots are minus b over a, the, uh, the product pairs give you c over a, the sum of the possible triples is minus d over a, and all four roots multiplied together is e over a. And you'll notice that you've also got delta in here as uh, the new letter that we would use for cortex. Yes? How would you solve my delta? So I start at the top for delta. I start here, and I do like... I go like I'm doing a letter S, and then at the end, I kind of change it to like a, a D. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's perfect. So start at the top and kind of go around like this. I don't know, do people ever do them like that? People write Greek letters in different kinds of ways. Yeah, I guess so. However you want to do that makes you feel comfortable writing. I personally, I find my deltas and... Uh, deltas and gammas sometimes look quite similar, and that's one of my things I'm trying to improve, so that I can notice differences between them, okay? And if we were going to do it with a quintic, I imagine the letter that we would use would be, anyone got any ideas of what the letter would be? We've got alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. epsilon. And epsilon is kind of like a backwards three, like a little e, okay? What's capital E? No, this is a capital E. Oh. This is actually a lowercase Greek letter. Right? I think so. OK, so we're just going to go straight in with what we've got here. So I've got a summary now. I don't like to think of it with all of these notation that we've got here. I way prefer to think of it as just this notation you've seen me doing already, that the sum of the roots, the sum of the product pairs, the sum of the triples, the sum of all four of them. Usually, that's, you know, if there's only going to be, there's not going to need to be this sigma sign at the beginning. But the reason I put that sigma sign in, it was in case if we were doing a quintic, which is not in the curriculum, but if there was a quintic, you'd have to do all of the possible combos of four things, and it would still be equal to E over A. And then your last bit, which would be alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, would be minus F over A if it was a quintic. Okay? Um, yeah? If we both both so like if you write that sigma notation, them. the examiner will understand what you're okay. talking about. Yeah. So what I usually like to do when I have an equation is I, as I've done this a few times, but I just want to do it one more time, is I would leave the first one here and I just go through so that I just have them written down immediately. I would just go, this is minus B over A. That's the one I remember. And then everything else just comes naturally afterwards. Then I have C over A minus D over A, E over A minus f over a. I'm doing an example of a quintic, even though that's never really going to come up for us. And then underneath it, I just go, well, that's the sum of the roots. That's the sum of the product pairs, the product triples, alpha, beta, gamma, alpha, beta, gamma, delta. And this last one, because it's a quintic, would be alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. I personally just find if you write that down on the equation, you've got all of the information to hand without having to remind yourself, oh, okay, the sum of the triples is, is it D over A or is it minus D? You just have it there written straight away. And that's kind of the memory tips that I like to think about, that instead of having to memorize this whole thing, all you have to memorize is that. Once you've memorized that the first one is minus b over a, the rest of it just follows completely naturally, doesn't it? The rest of it's just going to flow through the question because you know it goes along the alphabet and that it oscillates between minus and plus. And then these things are also equally easy to see because each time you're adding in an additional root as you go along. Andrew? Oh, you the question. OK, great. So we're going to now just have a go at this one example that we're going to do for cortex. And it basically follows the same logic of all of the other things that we've got here. So this time we have the equation x to the power of 4 plus 2x cubed plus px squared plus qx minus 60 equals 0. And it says that x is a complex number. Interestingly, they decided not to use z. They've used x. But they have told us that x is a member of the complex numbers. p and q are members of the real numbers. And it has roots alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Given that gamma is minus 2 plus 4i and gamma, sorry, delta equals uh, gamma conjugate, that little star there hasn't necessarily come up very clearly. You know that that star means that it is a conjugate, complex conjugate. Show that alpha plus beta minus 2 equals 0 and that alpha beta plus 3 equals 0. Okay, 
So let's just write down some of the things that we've got here. We know that gamma is minus 2 plus 4i, and delta is minus 2 minus 4i. Now, when I look through the information, I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to start off by writing x to the 4 plus 2x cubed plus px squared plus qx minus 60 equals 0. I'm going to do the advice that I just said, which was this is minus b over a, c over a, minus d over a, e over a. Some of the roots, some of the pairs, the product triples, alpha, beta, gamma, delta. I'm going to have all of them together like this. I just like writing that because I think that's helpful to do. So I'm just going to give you a chance to write that so that you've got the information that you need. It can have all complex roots, correct. This one can have all complex roots. I, I like yeah, because cubics, it's, you, you know what the setup is going to be in a cubic. Um, and quartics is just a lot more work going on here. So we are going to use, out of these statements that we've got written, out of this, 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 and this, which are the best two to use and which are, and why are they the best two to use? Good. Yeah, you actually have values for them. P and Q, you don't have values for them. So there's no point in using those ones. So I'm actually just going to go to this first one that I've got here, and I'm going to write down that the sum of the roots is minus B over A. It's so much quicker to write this sigma notation. So that is that alpha plus beta plus gamma, which is minus 2 plus 4i, and delta is minus 2 minus 4i equals minus b, which is minus 2, over a, which is 1. So I'm just going to leave it as minus 2. Again, the sum of the roots is wonderful because we know the imaginary parts are all going to cancel out. And so the 4i's cancel. And we get alpha plus beta minus 4 equals minus 2. And then I would just tilt my head up and say, well, remember, that was the thing I was aiming for. And I've basically got it, right? All I need to do is make it equal to 0 so that I get alpha plus beta minus 2 equals 0. That's the first bit done. And it's pretty obvious where this next bit's going to come from. It's going to come from this thing here, right? It's the only place it can come from. So we know that... Yeah, it's, it's still going to, yeah, it's going to give you all the right kinds of things that we need. So we know that all four of them is equal to E over A. And so that is alpha, beta, gamma, delta equals E is minus 60 and A is 1. So what did these multiply to? Careful, minus 2 20, times minus 20. 2, 20. So you get 4, and then from these bits you get minus 16i squared, which is 16. Which is great, because we've now got 20 alpha beta is equal to minus 60. Alpha beta is equal to minus 3. So alpha beta plus 3 equals 0. which is the other thing that we wanted. Often people get really confused and they look at the things that I've just highlighted in yellow here and here and they often think, how am I going to get to that? And they get in a bit of a panic and think, how am I going to get there? Really, I never even look at those things. I just do the math that's available to me and normally they're just going to appear. In this case, the only maths that was available to me were these two things that I highlighted in yellow. That was the only option of what I could do. And surprise, surprise, here are the equations that I've got. So then it says, hence find all the roots of the quartic equation. Well, we've already found two of the roots. So what's it actually asking for us to do in part B of the question? Exactly. We're going to do simultaneous equations because we need to find alpha and beta. So in terms of using these simultaneous equations, which do you think is a good method to do these equations simultaneously? Do you think we should work on this one first 
or this one? Which one should we do for the substitute? Which one should we rearrange for the substitution? The first one we're going to rearrange for the substitution. So this was my part A of the question. I'm going to do part B of the question. I'm going to rearrange this. So I'm just going to make alpha the subject. I don't care if you make beta the subject. It doesn't really matter. So alpha is equal to 2 minus beta from that equation. And I'm now going to substitute it into this equation that I've got here. So that is going to be alpha beta plus 3 equals 0. So that is minus beta squared plus 2 beta plus 3 equals 0. And I'm going to be lazy, of course, and use my equation solver. So that's minus 1, 2, and 3. And we've got that either beta is equal to or minus 1. Well, if beta is 3, alpha is minus 1. If beta is minus 1, then alpha is 3. So that's going to tell you what all of the roots are. So I'm just going to say that one more time. If beta is 3, alpha is 2 minus 3, which is minus 1. And if beta is minus 1, alpha is 2 minus minus 1, which is 3. So no matter which way you look at this, because the, the equation doesn't know which one is alpha and which one is beta, we've named them alpha and beta. All we do see is that the roots are 3 and minus 1 for the real ones. So the roots are, and this is where we don't necessarily need to name them as alpha and beta. We could just say that the roots are minus 1, 3, minus 2 plus 4i, and minus 2 minus 4i. Yes? Can you do like slashes instead of like commas and ends? No, I wouldn't do slashes because slashes imply uh, like a division. So oh. I would rather write them as a list because when you start using words, we still want to use the conventions of the English language with it. Yeah, okay. okay. And if this were a, um, if this were sketched on a graph, how would this look on a graph to pull it back to what we're doing in pure maths at the moment? You don't have to do this, but what would this look like if it were on a graph? There'd be some intersections at minus 1 and 3. And where would the branches be? Up and up like this or down like this? Like two arms up or two arms down? Yeah, yeah they would be up. Why would they be up? Because it's, um, positive, it's a positive quartic. And positive quartics have branches going up. So I don't know what the graph is going to look like. All I know is it's going to cross there. Yeah, so it could be like this. Oh, and it also intercepts at minus 60. That's true. So it could be like this. We just don't know what the shape is going to look like. It could have had that bump in the middle. We just don't know because we don't, haven't, haven't done quite enough to be able to think about that graph sketching sort of skills. So we still need to finish this and find out the values of P and Q. This is where it gets quite long. Um, so to find out what P and Q are, we're going to use these two facts. So we're going to do the sum of the pairs to get C over A. So let's actually do now that the sum of the pairs is going to be C over A. Now I need to do all of these as pairs. So you're just going to be really careful about how you do them. And this is where I'm going to give you a tip of what I would do on the calculator. So we have minus 1 times... In fact, I might just show you what I would do on the calculator because I think that's just going to be the better thing. Let me just quickly turn on this camera and hope that this is going to work for me. Okay, is this the right way around? Okay, so on this calculator, I would go to the matrix, which is number one. Let's delete everything I've got here. And I would say, what, my, what was my first root? So I would press minus one equals, and then there's this little arrow button down here, and I would send that to, and you press alpha and then A. So I've stored minus 1 in A here. I wonder if I can just get this to focus a little bit better. That's oh, nicer. OK, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in, what's the next root? 3. Yeah. So I'm going to press 3 equals, and then I'm going to press that arrow again, and I'm going to send it. I'm going to send this one to B. So I'm going to send it to B. And then what's the next root? Minus, minus, minus 2 plus 4 shift. I is down here, press equals, 
send the answer to C. Then I'm going to do minus 2 minus 4i, press equals, send the answer to alpha D, press equals. Now it's going to be so easy. You know what, what am I going to do now to do the sum of the pairs? Great. So to do that, you literally just go A, B, alpha A, alpha B, plus A, C, plus A, D, whoops, plus B, C, plus B, D, plus C, D. Is that all of them? A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D, C, D. And then you just hit equals, and it's nine. OK, so I like to do that because now we can just say we save all that time in the exam of having to write it down. I don't need to write it down. The examiner knows what I'm trying to do. And I'm just going to say, was it 9 or minus 9? Uh, so 9 equals C over A, which is P. So 9 equals P. And then this one is going to be the sum of the triples. So the sum of the triples, alpha, beta, gamma, is equal to minus d over a. So I'll go back to the calculator. And then do the same. Yeah, so it's going to be a, b, c. I'm leaving out d. Then I'm going to leave out c. So a, b, d. Then I'm going to leave out b. And then I'm going to leave out a. And you get 52. So that tells me that 52 is minus q over a, and so q is equal to minus 52. So here are the roots, here are the solutions, and that, sending your answers to the bits on the calculator, that is a real time saver. Having to try and work out all of A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, B, D, and C, D without making a mistake is a lot of work. And it's a very easy way to make a mistake. I actually think there are less mistakes that you can make by typing in on the calculator. And sending them as A, B, C, and D, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, it just works. It just works really nicely. Okay, so I'm very happy for you to use that now at all stages. The exam board know that they should be looking out for people using the calculator in creative ways. This is a, a perfect way to use the power of this calculator that we've got here. Andrew? So, so you sort of mean to write everything down to the initial you're using the calculator? So you, can say did on, you can say did this on calculator, but you don't need to. Because if you just put the sum of the roots and then the answer, yeah. that's not the equivalent Yeah, and, and the one thing I should just mention is they do say in the mark schemes now, Students will use calculators for things that they can use the calculator for. So simultaneous equations, unless it says use algebra, like use the power of the calculator, and especially in these exercises. I don't want you to be doing this times this, 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 and this times this, and adding them together. Because we're humans, and humans make mistakes. Not, it's not because people are stupid, it's because we're humans. Humans make mistakes with things. So I just want to minimize the kinds of mistakes that you guys might make, okay? So that's it, we're gonna look at exercise 4C, and that's cortex done.